Hi, we're back with Nico Marks. The new album is Our Country. Nico, um, you originally tried going the Nashville route and wound up sort of taking a long break from music before coming back with this a new album, this time coming out of Oakland, coming out of a less Nashville way of thinking. Can you tell me about your experiences going through Nashville? Well, I can tell you that I was very young at the time, um, and I was just um, hopeful and excited. I felt like um, I was on my way to reaching my dreams and pursuing my goals. So I didn't, it hadn't crossed my mind that I wouldn't be accepted or my music wouldn't be accepted or it would be a hard road for me because I thought that music just transcended, and I still believe this, music transcends a lot of negative, you know, if people can just hear the music without maybe seeing you, it can really penetrate. So I was hopeful when I went to Nashville. That was back in 2005, I believe, when I came out with my first album, Freeway Bound. And um, I went down there. I played with some of the best musicians, session players that you could name, same people that were with Toby Keith, Kenny Chesney, you know, the the great session players down there. So for me, I um, I had a, a warm welcoming from the CMA. I would perform at the Country Music Festival um, during the years back then. And each year my audience would grow and to where it was just filled. The room would be filled, standing room only. But um, a year later, I would say about 2009, CMA changed their rules and made it to where you had to have all these songs charting a certain amount of sales to persist, to participate. So immediately that kind of threw me out of the box because I was an independent artist on an independent label and we just didn't have that traction. So we were, um, by way of um, rules and regulations, ousted from CMA performing that way. And so the road for me back then was a lot harder than it is now. Yes, yeah, so without without support, it's a lot harder. Um, first of all, in Nashville, this industry town, and also without the internet and the ease of discovering music that comes with 2021. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So I, I kind of got discouraged um, after my second album. It feels good. I was just like, maybe this isn't for you, you know. Um, so I just kind of went within and just I continued to play um, around the Bay Area because there is a there is an audience out here that loves country music. And so I continued to do my um, performances. I had a residency at a local country bar here called the um, the Overland, which is now closed, sadly, but so I was getting to do what I love to do, just not in the way that was typically, you know, typically seen go to Nashville, make a name for yourself, that kind of thing. I just started to kind of make a name for myself where I'm at. <laughs> and how how did an album come out of that after, I mean, 12 years away from the spotlight? Well, you know, it was kind of funny because I hadn't been thinking about doing an album. It didn't cross my mind until midway through the album. So I'll tell you, I had a dream about playing with um, two musicians that I used to play with back in the day um, when I was first starting out. That's Justin Phipps and Steve Wireman. And um, I reached out to Justin and I was like, Justin, I had this dream. We need to be making music. We need to do music. And this was pre-pandemic, and I had no idea he started his own record label, Red Tone Records. And then um, he said, well, I have this song. Um, it might work for you. Let's try it. And that song was Good Night America, which he'd written. And um, when I heard the song, I was like, oh, gosh, this is pretty, pretty truth-telling song, pretty hardcore truth about America and our history. And I was like, can you sing this? So I sat with the song for a while, and um, it really resonated as my truth. And so 
I kind of got over the fact that I hadn't done a song like this in my career. I've never been political in my career. It, it, it became something that I had to do. And yeah, it's a, a very political song. It's a striking song, sort of singing a lullaby to the, the way that America has disadvantaged so many people. And what did it take inside you to sort of put yourself out there with a statement that bold? I think it took um, a lot of growth on my end. Like, like there's been 13 years in between albums and I've grown a lot as, um, as a woman, as a singer of country music. Um, I've just matured on a lot of levels as far as what's important to me and what kind of legacy I want to leave in my music. And so Good Night America spoke to me in that way. And it's a, it's a real, um, it's a real honor to carry on truth telling, you know, in my opinion. And so um, this is what this album signifies, where I'm at in my life, what's important to me in my life, and what message I want to leave with the listener. I sort of wish that it would work the way it almost seems in that song where you could sing the way things have been a lullaby and let it fall asleep instead of the sort of kicking and screaming we see going on. Um, as Absolutely. They're changing right now as as the younger generation becomes more enlightened. You're sort of seeing instead of going to bed, you're seeing uh, the this almost violent reaction from right. the, and, the powers that be. Right, and I get a for Good Night America. I've heard um, some of my listeners say that you know this song is anti-American, and um, it's far from that. It's about unifying America. You know, um, like you said, it's about putting our past and the way we, our foundation and how we were built, changing that and building a, a brighter future for the next generation. Um, so it's really about putting the, um, you know, the worst parts of us to rest so we can be better. I think that um, the lines that we're seeing drawn, being drawn is just from a lack of education around the genre of country music, around, um, I just think there's just so much misinformation out there that people can't really accept that this is actually a natural progression for a lot of people like myself. <laughs> so it's, it's, it, but I'm hopeful. I see a lot of, um, a lot of evolution happening with the new generation and, you know, there being so many people of color and, you know, Latinx and indigenous people that are, you know, singing their truths now. And it's, it's really nice to see by way of the internet and not have to rely on a large label to tell our story. Yeah. The large labels right now you have Darius Rucker and Mickey Guyton and even with Mickey, they haven't really let her put out a full album yet. Um, yes, but it's coming. It's coming. And it's I'm coming. so excited. I, yes. Uh, she is a little pop for my taste, but that sort of applies to most everyone else in Nashville. But her lyrics mm -hmm. are, her lyrics are special. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, Absolutely. She is something different and uh, what what advice would you have for her going through this process? Well, um, I'm a I'm a big I'm a big Mickey person. Um, I love to see us soar and flourish, and I support her in everything that she does. And I actually have a really good relationship with her. I just suggest she keep doing what she's doing because she is making a name for herself, and she's also holding the door open for those who are coming behind her. So. Um, I just want to encourage her to continue to, you know, stand firm on the shoulders of her ancestors, those who have paved the way for her, um, like I'm, like I choose to do. And so, um, my advice is just to keep going and know that you are supported, you are loved, and we lift you up. Those, those are my words to her. Those are beautiful words coming full circle. Um, I just wanted to say, 
I am so glad that instead of going through Nashville, you're going through the roots music world because I feel like this genre, especially recently, uh, we have so much room for diverse voices in the non mainstream Nashville world of country and roots music. No, we, we have Mavis Staple, Shamika Copeland, uh, Yola is just tearing it up recently. All those oh, I love her. Our daughters um, are starting to put out albums of their own. And, I mean, the the album Allison Russell put out this year is one of my favorites. I, oh, yes. I'm sort of in awe of the way Roots Music has, in not so long a time, just diversified so much. And yes. And what's coming out is so good. Yeah, it's very honest, pure, uh, soul, soul hitting music. Like you listen to these artists that you just named, and the music will speak to your soul immediately. And that's the kind of music I want to make, something that's touching you right away. Like not all these frills, but like really truth, honest telling music. And sometimes that's pretty and sometimes it's not. Well, um, the the song um, the songs from your album that I'm playing on this show are "Ancestors," "Travel Light," and uh, um, "Good Night America" because those are the ones that sort of guided our conversation. But I have played and I will continue to play some of the other ones because they sound. I mean. I, I don't know how else to say this, but something like pour another glass, that sounds exactly like what country music fans should be eating up. You know, it's got right. Jesus, it's got alcohol, it's got a good <laughs> tune. <laughs> I, it's missing nothing. And it's so funny because pour another glass was written like lightheartedly as a joke, but then the pandemic came along and the need I think it was around May or so in the pandemic, the need for relief and for laughter and for, you know, to persevere through what we were initially going through with the beginning months of the pandemic. It was, it was added because it was like, we need this song. We need this, you know, light, quirky kind of, you know, tongue in cheek song just to keep things not so heavy. I mean, and it's, you know, sort of sort of the only thing you could ask for uh, short of a true miracle during that pandemic was something to uh, smile and take your mind off it for a little. I remember just the absolute joy I felt when car racing came back and all the other sports, <laughs> it was still too dangerous, but it was like, we have something now. Right. Exactly. I, and, I can't uh, say I hated the pandemic, but it was really good to me musically. Um, yeah, I got I'm a chance to really go so in. Many, yeah, I'm seeing that so many albums are coming out now that were written over the pandemic, and it's like, oh, there's there's going to be some good music coming out of that stretch. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm going to switch things around. Um, good night, America. Um, will be the lead in to this set. And uh, Pour Another Glass will be the lead out. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming on, Nico Mark. Oh, thank you.